My name is Gregory White, Sergeant Retired, um, joined the Canadian Forces in 1998 and uh, retired as a Sergeant. I served in Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry and the Royal Canadian Regiment. Very cool. And I'm Dylan from Spicy Boys. This is the first installment of a series called The Visual Veteran. It's where we meet up with veterans local to us and uh, just have a short conversation about uh, what the, the military means to them, what their service meant to them. Uh, what they went through in the military, et cetera. Uh, and Greg is our first guest. So Greg, brother, I appreciate you so much for, for coming on and uh, having a chat with us. Uh, so what inspired you to join the military, brother? Uh, lack of options at that point in my yeah. life, and uh, which is very common. Um, and a history of family service. Uh, my father spent 37 years in the Canadian Forces. My, both my grandfathers served uh, in the Second World War and uh, it was a natural fit for me. So uh, where has the military taken you? Where have you toured? Where have you, uh, where have you been? All over Canada. I uh, spent a lot of time in Manitoba and uh, Alberta and here in New Brunswick and I went to Bosnia in 2000 and 2003. 2006 I was in Afghanistan and 2012 I was in the occupied Palestinian territories and Jordan. Okay, very cool. So, uh, what was Bosnia like? Um, definitely a sad state of affairs in that you see a country that, uh, though it's in Eastern Europe and rural people have probably lived the same for a hundred years, um, in the larger areas you see their schools uh, blown to crap, no electricity and running water, um, you know, the area we were in, 90% of the buildings in their villages are destroyed. So to see some a country that had a fairly good standard of living take a step 100 years into the past. Basically decimate themselves. Yeah, and all based on ethnic rivalry. Wow. Yeah, that's really intense. And you said that you were there in 2000 and 2003? Yes. Wow, that's, that's really crazy. So what was the difference in 2000? Was there a difference in 2000 versus 2003 where 9-11 happens in 2001? Was there... Um, I don't think the it's security situation in Bosnia was that much different, but you could see that infrastructure improvements, um, the European community, NATO being involved there, the infrastructure improvements were were very noticeable. And, um, you know, in the last five years, I know tons of people that have gone to Mostar and Sarajevo, so their tourist areas have... Um, have bounced back and you know the Croatian coast Dalmatia is one of the nicest places in the world and things have uh, improved greatly there yeah that's really good um, so what would you say for you was the most impactful memory from the military in a positive light um, the friendships for sure yeah, which is the camaraderie. the camaraderie for sure that's that'd probably be a universal answer um, like any workplace, you're gonna you're gonna work with people you love and people you can't stand, especially when you gotta see their face every day for six or seven months. Yeah. Um, but even those people, you know, you, you still bring a smile to your face. So the camaraderie, definitely the most positive um, aspect. Yeah, and I think like with like all like military friends that I have and veterans that I do know, I, you're right that that is like a relatively universal answer. I think mm -hmm. that is like because the military creates like a brotherhood amongst you. you know Absolutely. I mean? Even the difference between brotherhood and friendship, a lot of people don't understand because the term brotherhood sounds. Um, I don't know. I think of an electrician's union when I hear that, but when you have to entrust each other's lives to cooperating with each other. You create a bond that lasts a lifetime. Absolutely, yeah. You know, you're like it, like, uh, like you kind of like it forces you to push past any differences and, and work as a unit, right? Like that's big time. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I know that the military is like a, a relatively taxing career and something that uh, kind of weighs on people. What would you say uh, is what? What would you describe as like your your low point in the military? Um. Early in my career, there were individuals that I worked with who um, came from very rural areas. They had already been in the military for 30 years, so I'm talking people that would have joined before I was born and had very limited education and their sensitivity to cultures different than their own. Um, 
just didn't exist whatsoever. So those people are very difficult for me to tolerate. 100%, yeah. And that's something that even uh, us at Spicy Boys, we have like a, a very low tolerance for things like that. We're very um, inclusive and, and open-minded and supportive of, of everyone. And uh, we definitely uh, always maintain the perspective that that everybody is is created equally and we we try to make sure that we push that forward and make it a, a core value that is that's represented publicly with us so it's good to hear that you also share the mentality um, what would you say like for the would, would you say that you had to make a lot of sacrifices from your career in the military like uh, throughout your life um, your family suffers when you know you're away for months and months at a time and uh, Knowing that you're in a position where you could be killed or wounded is really stressful. Of course. And, um, you know, if you heard my father's version of the story when two guys in dress uniforms pull into his driveway and knock on his door, you know, that's incredibly taxing on a family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, yeah. That, uh, something that uh, I don't think a lot of people can actually relate to but definitely a situation that is easy to be empathetic and sympathetic for for sure um how much do you think being overseas affected you as a person back home making your day-to-day -day life back here uh but prior to joining the military i had already lived all over canada um i had spent a few years in europe um so i already had an appreciation for how big the world is and how many people have this myopic view of it due to their limited experience. Um, but going to a place like Bosnia, Afghanistan, the occupied territories, I mean, you come home and you just, the last thing you want to hear is someone complain about someone's in my parking spot or my cell phone doesn't work. It's mm. like, you have no idea, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It kind of gives you like a, you like really got to step back and, and it's like, um, people just have no idea how good they got it. How privileged you know? it is. To yeah, be. absolutely. hundred percent. And, uh, I think that like it's it's uh, definitely over the years like generations have gotten m even more uh, or even less thoughtful. Do you know what I mean? Like young mm -hmm. people have gotten to the point of like everybody just seems so quick to jump down people's throats and like find something to bitch and complain about that. Absolutely. And, yeah, it, and and when you when you do take like a, a pic uh, look at the pictures here, like it it just everything just seems so so simple. Right, so much, so much more uh, relaxed here. Like, it's crazy the difference. Canada has its shortcomings as well, particularly in the history of how First Nations people have been treated, um, amongst others. Of course. Um, but Canadians have this reasonable self-reflection that they wish to improve upon, and um, for all the bad in Canada's history, you know. In recent memory, no one's blowing each other's villages up based on what their last name is or something like that. Yeah, or, or hurting people into concentration camps. You know, it's for all the bad we have, we just can't conceive of how much good there is compared to other places. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So speaking of, of uh, war torn situations, we got some pictures here. Uh, do you want to just tell us a, a little bit about the injuries that we see see in the pictures here? In June of 2006, um, I was with Battle Group Headquarters in Kandahar Province, and we were hit twice in one day, once by an IED, which disabled one of our vehicles, and then later that day, recovering the damaged vehicle, a suicide bomber uh, detonated his vehicle next to our convoy, and uh, I caught a piece of shrapnel, which entered my tricep and blew my distal humerus out my forearm, with my uh, radial artery, and if it wasn't for the uh, the guys next to me in the crew who slapped tourniquets on my arm and prevented me from bleeding to death, it would have been a far different outcome. Yeah. So there was a comical moment when it was like Monty Python, you know, blood spraying out of an artery in the back of the vehicle. <laughs> it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> I've had worse. Yeah. <laughs> so what? Try to like. I mean. I don't want to go right back to the moment, but like, just like what, what's going through your head when something like that happens? Like, I mean, you get a piece of shrapnel slices through your arm. I'm sure that you're not totally aware of the extent of the damage, but you definitely know that you're, uh, for lack of a better word, fucked up. You know mm. what I mean? So what, what's going through your head when something like that happens? Mm. 
I wish I had the, the video right from when it happened because I sat down and pulled my glove off and blood was just pouring out of my arm. Mm -hmm. And I turned to the, the man next to me, John, and said, get a tourniquet on my arm right now. You know, mm -hmm. I had uh, used tourniquets. Crazy how hypervigilant you are. You, you like, you, you, there was no thought process to it. You were just like, we need to take care of it. That's why you got to train, man. Yeah. That's why you got to train. And I, I had done life-saving first aid on some uh, Afghan National Army guys who had been severely shot up. And uh, I knew the importance of, of haste when you're leaking at that rate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. So, uh, sorry, where did you say that it happened? Uh, just west of Kandahar City. Which is in? In Kandahar Province in Afghanistan. I appreciate you so much, brother, for, for having a, having us into your home and letting us shoot. And uh, thank you for your service. I'm definitely going to give you a bottle of uh, the Vicious Veteran, which is the new hot sauce that, that Spicy Boys has out. Thank and you. 50% of the, the profits from this sauce are going to Soldier On, which I'm, I know that you know, but for our audience, Soldier On is a, uh, an organization within the Canadian Armed Forces that helps with the rehabilitation of men and women who come back from overseas with uh, PTSD and other mental illnesses. Uh, a really, really great organization. They get uh, the men and women out working, playing sports, like just like kind of brings that sense of camaraderie back to their life. So we're happy to support them. Uh, very, very large appreciation to our veterans and uh, happy Remembrance Day, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, this has been an episode of The Visual Veteran with Spicy Boys. This is Gregory Owen White, uh, a veteran from Fredericton, New Brunswick, and uh, that's the first episode of uh, The Visual Veteran. Thank you guys so much. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, see you guys in the next one.